<laughs> so so great to have you again here, you know, second time and after long pause. It's so <laughs> been well it's it's lovely to be back at Birch Tree Gallery because um Scotland is such an inspiration for my work. And I think this is the first e- exhibition that I've had where it is all Scottish material. Yeah, fantastic. So exciting. Yeah, it is. Yeah, really I cool. just couldn't believe that you had enough work for the, to fill the whole walls. You know, that was just thrilling. But I think part of it is kind of a reaction to lockdown in a way because it's it's kind of a lot of my work's about space and light and distance. And of course, we've all been trapped in yeah home so mm-hmm. it's it's absolutely fantastic to be able to come and explore traveling through print rather than actually going out there and doing it so yeah yes. very excited by that yeah so walk the walk <laughs> yeah yeah well, it's walk the walk which is the title of the exhibition is as well it was your suggestion but i think it's really really appropriate for the, the kind of stuff we have on the wall um and and indeed walking the walk is is what I do to gather the source material. So I sketch and I photograph and we look around and take lots of um, documentation about about the scenery. And then it all kind of gets cooked up in my studio and turned into a print. So um, I think we've got representing pretty much all over Scotland in this, this exhibition. And all seasons as well. Yeah, not absolutely. just <laughs> geographically, yeah. but yeah, there is a winter definitely, and uh, and we've got high summer, summer as well. I mean, I think that one of the things that draws me to Scotland is the amazing ephemeral weather. The kind of you have this this constantly moving and changing light, and I I really really love the delicacy of the light. I mean, there's there's a print here which is called Rain and Light on the West Coast, and that, that sort of that mm. lovely way that the weather blows in and changes. And I'm kind of always trying to catch the movement of that in the prints that I make. So distance is important for me, but also that quality of light up here, mm. which is very exciting. And I should also thank you for St Abs as well, because this is Jugita, <laughs> Jugita, whose gallery we're at, um, very much sent me off to, to St Abs up, up uh, I suppose it's about an hour from here. It's a little bit more, yeah, yeah, hour and a half or so. But, but, you know, I just made a suggestion and she said, like, we're going, you know, like, I was like, oh, I wish everything would be so easy in life, like, first, you know. Well, these these two prints here, these, and and, and the one in the window, which you'll see on the film, because it's filmed from outside as well. I mean, it's, it's just a fantastically exciting bit of the coastline. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm always sort of very happy to confess my terror of heights and, and my fear of falling off things. So these were very much drawn me lying flat, completely flat on the ground. I mean, it's pathetic. So we really. have made two of us, actually. I have the same fear of heights. <laughs> well, I've got, I've got walking boots on now, but we didn't have them then. So we were just in, like, ordinary shoes and the slippy grass and it, it literally is like that uh-huh. so when I came to do these prints I, I like the idea of using this sort of white space around them and just honing in on those kind of amazing drop shapes both of those so it's, it's a remarkable um, place to go and I also really like how the stones change colour there you have like almost like two different sorts of stones so you have the the pale grey and then these sort of much browner stones. It's fantastic that you're not afraid of white space, you know, it just doesn't scare you at all, you know, so, so that's, that's what kind of sets you apart, you know, your works also, because the white paper is celebrated, it's, it doesn't have to be, you know, filled. Well, I think, and, yeah, you know. I, th- I think that has possibly a lot to do with kind of being in Japan and looking at sort of Japanese prints. But I think also I'm, I'm always looking for kind of a quietness and for the viewer to make the landscape their own and to sort of have ownership of that landscape. And I mm. quite like using white space almost in an abstract way because it's not about being in a particular location. I mean, obviously they are real places, but it's not just documenting that location. What I want is for the viewer to kind of 
maybe remember a walk they've done or a, a type of weather that they love and to mm. actually sort of put their own story mm. into, into the picture. You know, that's, that's something I, I like a lot. Mm -hmm. you know, I like to stand back and let the viewer make it their picture. And it's interesting with landscapes how often that happens, um, where people relate to it maybe in ways that I haven't even thought of or, or in sort of um, a particular affiliation for, for that type of landscape. And sometimes it's, it's just something about the rock shapes or something like that, you know, it's quite interesting. Well, but you know, it all it all depends on perspective. You know, mm. you said the Scottish weather. You know, there's mm. so many people would be not happy about Scottish weather. <laughs> but you just you just <laughs> take it. it. You know, you yeah. love it. But it's also yeah. you're prepared. Yeah. It's like lottery. You don't mm. know what you're gonna what ticket. Especially like you know, in these past few days, mm. this trip is fairly short. Mm. You had no idea what you were gonna get. No, no. And we were in the Trossachs uh, yesterday to, to for me to draw and to photograph. And it was relentlessly wet, and it was very, very misty, and incredibly beautiful and exciting. Mm -hmm. And we went um, and looked at rivers and waterfalls and things. And of course, they're all in spate at the moment because there's been so much rain, and it's it's a fantastically exciting landscape. So although we got wet and a bit chilly, it was absolutely amazing. <laughs> and now, of course, there's beautiful sun. Now, now I'm in Edinburgh talking in the gallery, and the sun has come out. Well, you know. But uh, maybe by the time we yeah. get back there, it would be the same. <laughs> so. But actually, that, that uh, sort of concept of the hot, sunny, bright day, people often sort of seem to think that's, that's what I would like it to be like when I'm out drawing. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's, to me, the least interesting weather. Like, high summer, in a way, is the least interesting season for me. I'm very much a kind of spring, autumn, winter person. How do you capture this atmosphere? So one thing when you draw, I mean, we've mm -hmm. seen your sketches, yeah. you know, you sometimes photograph your yeah. sketches, but the drawing is just lines, you know, yeah, it doesn't capture atmosphere. No, so how all. do you, you know, how do you take the sense of that weather home with you? Like, <laughs> well, I do, <laughs> I do a lot of sort of gawping into space. I mean, it's, it's my husband's very familiar with me just sort of standing on the edge of things looking. So, I do a lot of looking, and we do take a lot of photographs. I mean, I'm very lucky in that Ben is a photographer, so he takes very good mm -hmm. photographs, I take very rubbish photographs. So I do document it, although interestingly, it very rarely, I very rarely refer to that for the kind of weather that's more in my head, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I mean, there's always... So it's, it's almost like internal memory. Yeah, you remember absolutely. how you felt yeah. at that moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. And I think that's massively underrated. I think there's this kind of idea, convention says that if you're a landscape person, then you, you have to sort of ideally be out there and painting or, or making notes and things like that. But actually all the cooking up of the print happens in my studio. Mm -hmm. When I go out, I do a lot of note taking and I do a lot of looking and I do a lot of um, bits and pieces of sketching and things like that. But I need time. You know, some of these prints, they take maybe a year or more for me to work out how I'm going to take what I've drawn or, and photographed mm. and turn it into something. Yeah. So, in some ways, it's really not a documented landscape, but it's your... Yeah. What you experience. It's yeah. your experience. It's, yeah. it's not somebody else might yeah. be standing next to you and it would be so completely yeah, different no, experience. No, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's... it's um, and I think it's very influenced by the way I feel about landscape because certainly anything that involves heights, I think there is this sort of slightly <laughs> lurchy feeling about it. Um, but really, it, absolutely what I want is to produce something that gives the viewer an in into that landscape or into that feeling. You know, I, I'm sort of not trying to... I'm trying to sort of, in a way, step away and give them something rather than impose my view of what it should be. So, so I, you're so really kind of, drawn into yeah, it. Into, yeah, into, and I like it. I like it. I like the idea that these landscapes belong to the people who are looking at them. They don't belong to me. That's that's kind of my my big ambition is to kind of almost sort of have them as portals, if you like. 
the other um, sort of metaphoric meaning of walk the walk is that you are so generous in the showing <laughs> process of your work, you know, and sharing it on Instagram and on YouTube. And, and I think that's, when I suggested that title, it was not only walking the walk mm. as, as documenting landscape, but it's also you walk the walk with your followers in terms of that you very generously yeah. share the process. You know, that's also walk the walk, you know. So. That's, that's interesting, actually. I hadn't thought about it like that. But I, I think because I teach and I, I really see teaching as very important for my practice as an artist because it, it, it keeps me constantly moving forward. And I've, I've always enjoyed sharing how I do things because I figure that everybody is going to be taking different journeys. So there's no harm in telling people. I don't like to keep it a secret or anything. I don't really, you know, I'll share what I use and how I do it. And that's very much part of what I do. But I think also it's good for people to understand what goes into printmaking you know, even if they're not, like, wanting to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. I think people are genuinely interested. And it's nice to show people kind of unexpected things that you can do, maybe with lino cut that's a bit different, or with the Japanese woodblock that I do, which is... I mean, it's better known now than it was when I first started, but it's not really well known in this country. So I love that aspect of, well, this is how you do it. This is how you get that effect. That's how you get this feeling. Um... And that's always been very rewarding, and it's brought me lots of positive opportunities and things like that. I wholeheartedly believe that the more you share, the more you as an artist kind of blossom. I, I've certainly mm. found that with my practice. So. Well, that's that's because <laughs> you are so confident, you know, and if you don't have, you know, I mean, sure, I remember uh, last time mm. when you um, brought and left me the, the woodblock um, mm. Uh, you know, just to show people yeah. the woodblock uh, carving, you know, and you kind of made a joke. I said, like, well, if somebody wants to steal it and try it, let them do it, you know. So, <laughs> yes, yeah, so you, know, you know, there yeah. is no way of replicating experience or years of no. experience just because somebody heard yeah. how it's done. It's, so. it's true. And actually, that's something that I always try and get across is it takes time, you know, it takes time to learn anything, whether that's making a print or learning to skateboard or anything it takes practice and diligence and making mistakes and goodness knows I've made all the mistakes there are to make and still do and I'm constantly learning as well I like to think that every time I make a print I try something a little bit different and something that I'm not expecting to push forward all the time so you know it's been as I try always to make it just a little bit difficult to do because I think that's how that's you get your best well. Exactly, if you're out of your yeah. confidence um, a little bit. So now so, yeah. this might be an odd question, but I'm curious. You still relate to certain work more than the other. I'm, I'm sure it's like, I mean, it's all your work, and you poured your heart <laughs> into every one of them. But is there one piece which you suddenly either spark some kind of sudden memory or something? I'm just like suddenly oh, right, if yes, you just scan and right. it's suddenly like think, oh, well, um, I have to say, I think uh, we're sitting opposite the, the, the biggest print here. And I have to say the sky in that, I'm really pleased with the sky in that. I think mm. that really is absolutely as it should be. And the one that I, I'm really fond of this one here because it's so awkward, there's something very kind of pleasing about the, that kind of great big rock just sticking out of nowhere. So it's kind of uh, a brave attempt. It's, yeah, it's brave. Exactly, exactly. It's really brave and it's a bit mad. And it, I did this, um, sort of funnily enough, although it's, it's very Scottish, I did it on the back of going to Japan, which I did um, last year, and I spent a month in Tokyo, and I also went to Kyoto, and I visited the, the very famous gravel garden. Mm -hmm. And they have the, the gravel garden where there's the rock and there's the gravel and things, and there is a sort of absolute rightness about that, 
And when I came back, I made this picture. And in a way, it's a kind of, it's almost, it's like a gravel garden. There's a, the water is doing, it's sort of like the gravel, and there's this, just this one rock. So it was kind of an homage to, to that sensation of, of kind of just calm and a whole landscape in a, in a rock. So, that, yeah, I'm quite fond of that. Mm. Oh, thanks for sharing about that. <laughs> so, yes. And other than weather and the atmospheric weather, is there something else what you can find in Scotland that you can't find in any other Oh, landscape? the colour. I think, you know, your colours are just perfect. I mean, I, I have to say, whenever I've been travelling in Scotland, it has always been in the seasons that I like, so it tends to be autumn and spring and, and a little bit in winter. And there is something about the kind of golds and oranges and greens and things that work really beautifully. I mean, I come from Buckinghamshire, which is very lush, and it's very kind of sheltered and curvy. And there's a kind of heaviness about that. And, and what I love up here is the kind of freshness. And I guess for a lot of people, it'd be quite austere, these kind of great mm. empty hillsides and things. But no, it's the colours of those are just amazing. Really, really lovely. So that's... Um, though I have to confess, I'm not 100% keen on heaven, which is awful. It's, it's interesting, just yeah. before you said that, I wanted to say that colour doesn't appear anywhere. Yes. So, <laughs> so that's, I, I, yeah, I should be ashamed of myself, I know. But to be fair, I've never been up here where the heather's all been in blue, mm. so I've kind, mm. of, I've kind of dodged that. So that's, that's my only... My one slight thing, mm. but otherwise, no, the colour is just amazing. Well, so, fabulous yeah. to have all well, Scottish work on the walls. I mean, all Scottish scenes. So, not only yeah. I'm, I'm thrilled to have your work here, <laughs> but that it's all Scottish. That's yeah, like that's kind of unbelievable. Yeah. So, that's fantastic. That's great. So, so we're open now. The show is, is open. Yes, now. it's on, yes, basically tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah, what days so, are you open during the week? So, Wednesday through Saturday. 12 to 5, weekdays and Saturday 12 to 4, and Tuesday by appointment um, only. So if right. somebody can't make it other days or traveling, then they can, uh, get, very, in touch, yeah, they can get in touch. But also, if people are, if they have any particular question or want to see something like maybe on Zoom or something, like if they are long distance and they want to, I mean, I'm very happy to either take, you know, framing photograph mm. or even be on Zoom mm. and chat about Perfect. it. So, so people yeah, can so reach you direct yeah, and do it. Absolutely and I can Fantastic. arrange by yeah by, by email, by phone, you know, and we can arrange some kind of also digital interview. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Well thank you everybody for watching that and I do hope you'll come to the exhibition. I'm really excited to have pictures on the wall so <laughs> fantastic. And thank you Laura for yeah, well, making you. Scotland known more for your work. <laughs> so oh, that's great. Yes. Thank you.